morning, my friends, and happy Friday morning. I am Irina in New Berlin, Wisconsin at Eclectica in our new home. Um, and today I have a super fun, very, very easy lariat to show you. I love knotting and it's a really simple knotting technique. And so today I'm going to share it and there's definitely a little bit of a strategy. I think it's really fun to take a technique that is so very simple and see where you can go with it and um, create something that maybe doesn't look so simple. So I created this lariat for the holidays. In fact, let's take a look. So I made two different versions of this lariat. And definitely, as I was working on it, I was thinking holidays, but it's a bit toned down. It's not quite so ostentatious as sometimes we think of holiday jewelry. So um, it's to me, this is a, um, a holiday project, but it's really more of a winter type project. And so actually, this is the first version of the project, and it is just a little bit more sparkly. And my, um, when I set out to create it, my thought was, let's make something that goes with the darker tones. We all occasionally like something that's a black and white. This is not quite a black and white. It's not quite so stark. It's really more of shades of gray and um, definitely some um, black thrown in, some silver tones thrown in. And the inspiration for this were these very snowflake-like gears. So that was my first component and everything just kind of came later. But I think that uh, the, the snowflake gears are definitely a focal point of this lariat. And then there are definitely some secondary focal points like the tassels. Lonnie says, good morning, I've been waiting for you. Good morning, Lonnie. Yes, I am so sorry. We started a little bit late today. You know, again, they're, they're so, you know, we're in a new spot and whenever you do anything differently, there are other things to adjust. So today we were trying to adjust the lighting so that you can see both me and the jewelry. <laughs> Lynn C says, good morning, Irina, Tony, Lauren, and everyone. Good morning, Lynn. Trudy and, says, good morning, everyone. And good morning, Trudy. And Lucy does too. Hello, Lucy. Betty says, good morning. Hi, Betty. Julie says, hello. Hi, Julie. Pammy J says hello all from sunny South Florida. Hello, Pammy J. It's so good to hear from you. Rosalind says good morning everyone from Southern California. Love the necklaces. Hi, Rosalind, and thank you so much. All right, so I'm actually showing you the two different versions now, at least, you know, the focals. And um, so I was, I was actually going to point out that um, I have two versions of this, and they're both uh, definitely to me in winter colors, and uh, you know, uh, both use very much darker tones predominantly, but one has silver components and silver tone tassels, and the other is brass. And of course, in my world, you know, brass is kind of like gold, even though it's a darker tone. But if you are primarily a gold wearer, probably the brass is more appealing. And of course, if you're a silver girl, then we have the silver. But I do want to talk about the colors just a little bit more. So. As I said, the first colorway that I designed um, was just, you know, shades of gray with a little sparkle, a little Swarovski sparkle thrown in. Um, and um, I love natural stones. 
So I used black labradorite in this necklace. And in, in both necklaces where I use stone, the stone is slightly coated. It's titanium coated. So you will see some nuances of color and I really enjoy that. I love that very light coating over the natural stone. So this gives us kind of the best of both worlds. We have our natural stone and then we have our sparkle of Swarovski and a few other elements that make the, the color more complex. Lynn O says, hi, all of my maker friends. And hello, Lynn. I'm so glad you're joining us this morning. Betty says, uh, those metal pieces are awesome. Thank you so much, Betty. I'm so glad you like them. Lonnie says, to me, the silver is more striking. Well, and uh, thank you so much, Lonnie. So that was, as I said, that was the first one. And I naturally um, kind of gravitate to silver because silver is primarily what I wear. But I have to tell you that I am so excited about this version because once I started working on it, I just realized I know why I love it. Um, it looks candlelit. So the stone here is um, tiger eye. And again, it is slightly coated. So you will see some, some nuances of other color that you normally would not see in tiger eye. And, um, and then there's definitely more color and it's very warm. It's sort of like these tones of both brass with a little bit of copper thrown in. So at first when I, when, I work, uh, when I was working on all of this and I had all my components in kind of a color puddle, I thought this, all of this together just kind of looks like looking at a fireplace, you know, right around this time of the year or especially once we get snow and everything is just kind of a, um, this beautiful frozen fairy tale outside, but inside it's warm and cozy and we have our fireplace going or maybe we just have a little candlelight and it's, it's kind of romantic. So to me, this version is very romantic. It's very warm, but of course I do like both of them and you guys are just going to have to pick your favorite. Carol says, good morning. Good morning, Carol. And thanks for joining us. All right, ladies. So it is, um, it's a lariat. And I think everybody's familiar with how one wears a lariat. But just in case, I think I'm going to show you how I envision it. So, um, well, first, it's the type of, there are so many different types of lariats. But this is the type of lariat that is, well, obviously it's knotted. And um, it's, um, it's just a long, it's essentially a long knotted string. So this is what it looks like. And I can see wearing it in two different ways. You know what, I am going to take my necklace off so you can really see it. And um, so I can see it one of two ways. First of all, okay, so let me just show you this. Well, maybe I'll come back to it. There is, a spot on the lariat that is meant for the back of your neck. So it's right here. And hi guys! So this is what's going to make it really comfortable. So this goes on the back of my neck. And then you pick a spot, any spot with no beads, and just cross it over in that spot. And it's, it's just like that. So it's casual, it's really easy, it's fun, right? So it's just that very kind of an easy to wear, casual look. Okay, so let's, let's explore maybe a different look. Kathy M says, oh, I love lariats. Oh, yay, thank you so much, Kathy. So a different look is this. If you put it backwards, right? And we're going to make it a little bit off center. So I'm just going to pick this little, uh, you see how I have like this little focal point right here. And I'm going to put that in front of my neck. 
and hopefully it's not too choky. So you can make it choky, you can make it however loose or not loose you want. And one tassel is going to be right up on top. And I hope this looks right. I can't see myself, you guys. So you are my mirror. So you tell me if this looks right. So one tassel is just a little higher and the other tassel becomes kind of a Y necklace. So it's a, it's a little bit of a two in one. It's a lariat and a Y necklace all at the same time. So good, I hope this looks right. So you guys tell me and tell me which way you like it best. So that is all of my demo. Now, of course, in addition to this, you could probably find other ways to wear it. Uh, it could even be a belt, it could be, could even be a bracelet, it could be a lot of things. Julie says super cool. Yay, thanks Julie. So, what do you think, should we make it? I say, let's go for it, right? All right, let's do it. So, um, this is probably going to be a project for maybe an hour and a half or two hours or so. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of a shortened uh, version of it, but definitely enough so that you can finish it. Also, remember, when you get the kit, you will get a very detailed picture uh, so that you can see exactly where everything is. Not that you have to put your beads exactly where my beads are. So if you decide to reshuffle it, you can. So remixes are always fun, but I will definitely share what my order of beads is and why. I love to share why. So there, there's kind of a reason for how I design these. So as I was saying, with these types of necklaces, I like to start with a, an unbeaded part. You see how I have about five to six inches of just string. And the string that I use is Ceylon. And I will come back to Ceylon and why I love Ceylon. So, um, so I like this unbeaded space because that makes it super, super easy to wear, super comfortable. Lonnie says she likes it long and looped. Okay, wonderful. So we have one vote for long and looped. Linda A says hi all and sends a cactus. Hi Linda, oh I love it when you send me cacti. Is it cacti or cactuses? But either way, I love it. Barb says, your demos and explanations are great. I have to make one of these. Oh, yay. Thank you, Barb. Let me know which one you like best. All right. So, um, so I start out with an unbeaded part, right? And then I like little beads at the top. So, you know, you saw my demo. This, this little part is going to sit at the side of my neck, right? So I don't want anything bulky right at the side of my neck because I feel like it's going to be uncomfortable to wear. Also, you saw the other way to wear the lariat where you actually wrap it around and this becomes a focal point. So again, I want that focal point to be a little bit dainty. So as we go on, the, get, the beads get larger. So that is my strategy. And um, so let's, let's get started. Linda says cacti. Cacti, fantastic. And uh, Deanne says she likes it long. Okay, so two votes for long. Mm -hmm. Let me know if anybody liked it wrapped around so that it's a little bit of a wine necklace look. So I kind of like both looks, but I love it when you guys tell me what you like. Okay, so I work with Ceylon and I love it because, you know, as you work with it, it has just a little bit of stiffness and um, it makes it very easy to go through the beads. You don't need a needle, it's just, you know, it's just very comfortable. For me, working with Ceylon and doing this type of knotting is just very zen. And um, 
it works out for most of my projects. I like the weight of it. I think uh, that weight-wise, it's heavy enough where it feels, um, mm, it doesn't feel flimsy, right? But it's also thin enough to fit through most beads. So it just seems to work out for me really well. All right, so we are starting out with um, 14 feet of Ceylon. I don't actually have 14 feet of Ceylon because for the purposes of the demo, I'm using a little bit less. But um, I'm just going to tell you, so you start out with your 14 feet of Ceylon, which is probably going to be a little bit of an, an overkill for most people, but you cut it in half. So right away, you only have seven feet at a time. And what we're going to do is find the center, right? So find the center, and then we're going to tie a knot in, not right in the center, but we're going to go about three inches from the center, or I should say two and a half to three inches. And this is going to be that unbeaded part of the necklace that makes it very easy to wear. And we're simply going to tie um, an overhand knot with both strands at the same time. So as you can see, I have both strands and I'm tying it into a knot. And just make it nice and snug. And, um, and since I'm only going to be doing half of the necklace for the purposes of the demo, I'm just going to go in the opposite direction, leaving five inches or so. So five to six inches in between those two knots. And so um, this unbeaded space is going to be right in the center of your lariat. And if you want a little asymmetry, you could move it maybe one inch one way or uh, another. So now we're going to start beading one side of the necklace at a time. And uh, I have all sorts of fun beads in front of me. So as I said, oh yes, I just reminded myself, you guys, just reminded myself, I do have a little surprise for you for the very, very end. And that surprise is, well, should I show you? Yeah, it's supposed to be a surprise, but I'm just going to give you a little preview of the surprise. So this is like a little bonus project I'm going to do at the end. It's a little martini earring, so it'll take us all of one minute. Uh, but I will save that until the very, very end. All right, so in the meantime, we are going to start knotting. And um, as I was showing you earlier, so this is the very first segment that we are going to create. So we start with, so in the case of the candlelit bracelet, did I say bracelet? I meant necklace. Linda says so cute. I think that's in reference to the martini. Oh, thank you so much, Linda. So it does have a little bit of stiffness. I'm referring to the Ceylon, but you know, sometimes you just make it so much easier on yourself if you make it even a little bit stiffer. So I think we're going to make a self-needle for this. It'll go a lot smoother if we do that. And we are going to do that with all four ends of the string. So since I'm only working on the one side right now, I'm just going to do the two ends. And you guys have probably seen me do this before. I'm using the super new glue and starting maybe about an inch and a half or so from the end and just covering the string in super new glue and then we're going to use a little piece of paper and you want to remove as much glue as possible and we're just going to let it dry. 
And I will do the same with the other end. So um, if my holes on the beads weren't fairly small, I might not be so adamant about removing as much glue as possible. But what I'm really trying to avoid is adding bulk to the string. So you want the string to stay as skinny as it starts out. You just want to just kind of uh, starch it a little bit. I mean, not literally starch, but you know what I mean. Make it a little stiffer. So uh, we're going to let it dry and, uh, and then we can cut off. Oh, do I have a pair of uh, cutters here? Yeah, do, do you mind? Um, sorry, you guys. Uh, my cutters are just over on the other table and fantastic. Tony just grabbed them for me. Thanks so much. All right, so super new uh, glue dries very, very quickly. In fact, this one side is already dry. So I'm going to cut it at an angle. So you want to cut it at an angle with the twist of the thread. If you look closely at the thread, obviously it's a little bit twisted, and cut it with the twist rather than against the twist. And, um, there we go. So we just created kind of like a skinny little point, like a little needle, right? So that's going to make it very, very easy to go through our beads. And we're going to do that with the other end, which is right here. So again, just create that little point. I love these cutters. They work on wire. They work on thread. They just are so universal. Okay, and this is the type of knotting that is so, so popular right now. This is very kind of boho style knotting where you see a lot of the thread exposed and the thread um, becomes part of the lariat. It's not just a carrier, right? It's not just um, a stringing material that we try to hide. It's actually something that we use as an element of design. So as you can see, I have my bead on one side, uh, or rather on one thread, and the other thread just kind of goes around the bead. And this is very simple. We're just going to tie another overhand knot. So all of this is just about overhand knots. But look at how many things we can do with just that one very simple knot. So as I said, my directions are going to be a little bit abbreviated for this, but definitely enough so that you know exactly how to do this. So I have my, my bead, and so now before I uh, string the next bead on, I'm actually going to look at where the thread is on the side of the bead. And I kind of want the next bead to have the thread go around in the opposite direction. Just like on my sample, can you see how each bead goes in the opposite direction? So it's a little bit of a zigzag. So I like that look. Again, that is a good element of boho designing, um, with, uh, um, designing boho jewelry. It's just a nice little element to throw in. So we're going to see where the thread goes around the bead. And we are going to pick the string that's closest to, um, to the string that goes around the bead, right? And next bead is going to be strong on that side. So there we go. And now you can see that the string is, it's kind of like a little zigzag. Now it goes around in the opposite way. And again, we're going to make a knot. And all the knots are going to be overhand knots. So I'm not going to say overhand knot every time, but just so you know. All right, so 
there we have a little bit of a zigzag starting to happen and so now we are going to add another bead and that bead again it oh no i actually do you see how i strung this on the wrong side and if i were to not my string would be going around the bead on the very same side. So I, I kind of want to change that before I tie my knot. Yeah, so you want to just pay attention to that part of it if you like that zigzag look. Okay, so now this is the way I want my string. All right, so we will tie another knot. And next, I love these little barrel beads. So I use the barrel beads in both versions. In the two versions, the beads will vary slightly. In this version, I have the, um, the faceted glass beads. In the silver version, I have the coated labradorite beads. And in both versions, I'm using that little faceted barrel as kind of that uh, little bit of sparkle and um, so at this point I'm going to string that on. Karen says I must run out we'll catch the replay have a great weekend everyone and stay safe. Thank you so much and you have a wonderful day Carol. All right Karen. So, Karen sorry um, and uh, so here I have my little sparkly bead and we will tie another knot. And you get the idea. We're just going to continue until we complete the pattern. So for this first one, I'm actually just going to go ahead and complete the pattern. And then we will start abbreviating a little bit. So I am simply treating this large, larger, I should say, barrel bead as one of the beads. So it's part of the zigzag. So I am going to alternate. And um, so now I'm stringing my faceted bead onto the string in such a way that I continue the zigzag. So as you guys probably know, um, at least I think most people know who watch me, that when you get these kits from our Etsy shop, this video is your only set of directions. And so what I'm saying is there are no printed directions, but A, this is actually such a very simple technique. I think you will not have problems. Um, replicating it and also each kit has a link that takes you right back to this video so you don't have to know which video um, you don't have to write it down because we will let you know when you when you get the kit the link is right there and, um, and here's my last little bead in this grouping and it's being bit stubborn so here we go okay so once we complete the grouping we are going to skip a little bit and when I say a little bit um, so the distance between this knot and this knot is roughly an inch so I just want to let you know that most of my spaces are roughly an inch to maybe an inch and an eighth or maybe, yeah, about an inch and an eighth or so. Um, actually, more like an inch and an inch to an inch and one sixteenth. Um, so my version of the Lariat is about 45 inches. If you want yours to be a little bit longer, you can always space a little bit differently. And there are also just a few extra beads, so you can make it longer with that as well. But mostly it's going to be, you make it a little longer with the spacing. 
and I feel like to pretty much maintain this look, you can go up to about 48 inches and it still looks really good. Okay, so I am going to tie another knot and uh, as we said, it's going to be right about an inch from the previous knot. And uh, I need a little barrel and we are going to string it onto one of the strands. It doesn't matter which one. And again, tie a knot. And then this gets a little bit more fun and exciting now that the first part is not. But I love this part. It's kind of, um, you know, I don't know, maybe because it reminds me of some kind of a sea critter, like maybe a sea urchin or, or something, you know, it just looks a little bit more organic. And yes, I'm using these wonderful little Rizzo's. So Rizzo's are these beads that uh, have a hole at one end. Here, I'm just going to string this one and let me show you how they actually hang. So you can see they have um, the, a hole at one end and it just makes it a little bit more organic looking when we put a whole bunch of them on. They're actually a bead that is really designed more for the stitchers, right? For the stitching designs. But I think it's very fun to use them in stringing. Rizzles are super fun. And um, so we're just going to use the same number of Rizzos on each side. And, uh, and then we're going to tie another knot. So in this first little grouping, I only use six Rizzos on each side. And, um, and that's, that's the look it's going to give us. And um, then further on in the necklace, I use larger grouping. So generally with these types of pieces, I tend to start small, closer to the neck, and then get quite a bit larger as I go. So this is what it looks like when you have six Rizzo's on each side. And now I'm going to tie another knot. Suni says, hi everyone, happy holidays to all. Hi Suni, and happy holidays to you. I'm glad you joined us this morning. All right, so this is what it looks like. And you know what, I think I need to grab one, just, um, I'm just stepping away for just one quick second because I didn't grab enough of those little barrel beads. So I'm grabbing one right now. Lindsay says, I really like the look of the tiny bunches of Rizzo's. Thank you so much, Lynn. I'm so glad. I love these little bunches. I, you know, I like that little element of asymmetry that it gives us, not even asymmetry, but it's just kind of a little organic element. So I'm so glad you like this too. All right, so here is one more little facet of barrel, and that completes our grouping. So now we are going to tie another knot. And um, so, um, well, maybe one more little element and then I will show you how it's finished. So I love these little Swarovski butterflies. They are just so cute and so very elegant. So I think that makes just a really nice little accent all by itself. And so we're going to tie another knot and just string on the butterfly just by itself. And I love, you know, I'm not looking forward to the day when we no longer have Swarovski because I love using all these little Swarovski elements. And um, 
Well, I guess when we get there, we will cross that bridge, but I'm glad that we stocked off in the meantime. So here is our little Swarovski butterfly. Okay, so now a little bit of a show and tell. Um, so our next segment is going to be three of the larger beads. And these, of course, are the coated tiger eye beads and they're just absolutely stunning. And I'm not going to demo all of this because, you know, as far as the technique and the strategy, it becomes quite redundant. So you guys can do all of this on your own. Um, and so then we have another little butterfly and another grouping of the tiger eye beads. And when you look at the two sides, the way that I did this is I did it so that... Um, there's just a little bit of asymmetry because I did one side so that there, there are three of the six millimeter tiger eye beads on one side and five on the other side. Then I have the butterfly and then the number of beads is reversed. So you can, you can see, right, um, that now it's on the opposite side that there are three and and then eventually five of the tiger eye beads. Suni is wondering if you're using waxed cording. Uh, thank you for asking, Suni. I am using Ceylon. I like Ceylon a lot. Um, it's, um, it's just um, stiff enough as you work with it, but then as, as you can probably tell, it's incredibly drapey once it's done. There's no stiffness whatsoever. So I think it's a really good balance. Lindsay says, when you have a chance, can you show your beautiful necklace with the kyanite pendant? I know you've shown it before, but I love seeing it. Oh, you are so sweet. Absolutely, I will show it. In fact, maybe I'll show it right now so that I don't forget later because um, as you know, I do have a little surprise for you for later. I will be demoing um, that little martini earring in a little bit. So this is my necklace. And just like all of my necklaces, it is, um, it's a mix and match. So you can wear it with whatever chain you want. So I, you know, I'm an asymmetrical kind of girl. I love organic. I love all these different gemstones. So I think this kind of reflects who I am as far as, um, well, as far as jewelry design and, and pretty much life as well. It's like a little bit of this and a little bit of that. All right, ladies, and we are going to continue with the project. So this part of it is just a little show and tell until we get to right about here. So um, so again, you can throw in a little asymmetry or you can make it symmetrical, however you decide to do it. In the silver necklace, I did it slightly differently where the two Rizzo segments are slightly asymmetrical. One is larger than the other. Again, whatever makes you happy. The only thing I'm going to say about this is that it works out best if the two sides have the same number of beads. So the two sides on um, of string in the same grouping need to be symmetrical. Other than that, whatever you want anything goes. Pammy J says, I find it easier to tie the Ceylon. Yes, I, you know, I love working with Ceylon. It knots very easily, it drapes beautifully, and it's just very easy to work with in all ways. Lindsay says, thanks so much, Irina. I just love the kyanite necklace. Oh, thank you so much, Lynn. Suni says, beautiful as always. Thank you so much, Suni. All right, guys, so... Once we get to right about this point, um, so in fact, let me just tie on one more bead just so that you can see that this is where we are. So we're just going to imagine that we have knotted all of these beads, right? And we're up to the little black rondelle. So we'll put the little black rondelle on. And 
And then I'm going to show you a super, super fun bead. I don't actually remember the, the name of this bead, but it looks like a giant faceted peanut. And I find that both very amusing and also elegant. And where's my giant faceted peanut? Oh my gosh, did I forget it? Um, okay, give me a second, ladies. I'm hoping that I have it in the tray in my room. And yes, I do, thank goodness. Okay. So this is a Swarovski bead. And um, again, I don't know the name of it, but it is Article 5150. It's one of those interesting shapes that Swarovski came up with a while ago. So you could say at this point, it is a vintage bead. And we are using three of it on each side. So it looks like a peanut, but prettier. And so this is what it looks like. And you can see it's faceted, it's sparkly, it's very, very fun. And when you bunch it up, so you can see this is the shape before you bunch it up. And when you do bunch it up, it becomes like a little bunch of grapes. And I love that. So once we have that on, we are going to, you know what? I don't know if I left myself enough string. So maybe we'll skip a couple of things and get to some very important stuff. So I'm going to skip this, um, this the six millimeter tiger eye bead as well as the little black rondelle here. And I'm going to get right to the meat of things. This is our focal point, right? And so I'm going to get right to that snowflake gear. So this is what you do. It's like a figure eight. So you go in through the opening in one direction with one side of the string and you go through the opening in the other direction with the other side of the string. And this is what you get. It's that easy. You just put the string in in opposite directions and um, it comes out on the other side of the gear and we tie a knot. The same exact knot we have been tying. So that is just how easy it is. And now we have, so this is I feel like this this entire piece is really our focal point. So let's let's make our focal point. So we are going to use a six millimeter Swarovski. This is just a six millimeter round Swarovski, which I think is very elegant in um, the black diamond color. And we're going to tie a knot. And then we are using, I think these drops, these teardrops are also very elegant and kind of chic almost because they are a matte black. They have this very simple faceting. Uh, there's something really handmade looking about these drops. And that's because they are hand faceted. And I love the metallic end caps on these drops. I feel like they just help tie everything together. So string on a drop. And again, the same way, we're just going to tie a knot at the end of the drop. So once our drop is on, we have a tassel. So in the candlelit color, we have the brass tassel, and in, um, I forgot, what did we call this color? Um, shades of Midnight. Shades of Midnight, that's right. So this is like, um, 
I don't know, to me, this is almost a little bit moonlit kind of color. And uh, so I just wanted to point out, so in the brass color, in the candlelit color, we have the brass tassel. And here we have a silver fiber tassel. So they're a little bit different. Lonnie is wondering what the drops are made out of. <clears throat> Um, the, the, oh, they're glass. Thank you for asking, Lonnie. They're glass. Okay, and uh, we are going to tie our tassel on the same exact way we have been knotting everything else. So again, the technique itself is incredibly simple, but it's really what you do with that same technique. So I am knotting my tassel on in the very same way and now I have two ends of my string left and this obviously is going to be the same for each side and uh, this is what we're going to do on one side we are going to string our marguerites and probably one of the most elegant beads in my opinion, that Swarovski has ever made is a marguerite. And I'm just going to tie another overhand knot. And this time I'm only leaving about half an inch between this knot and the next knot. So we're going to string the marguerites spaced out with the spacers. Now the spacers are going to be different on these two necklaces. Um, so I will point out that it creates a slightly different look. Let me just show you. So uh, the spacer is a bit more whimsical on the Shades of Midnight necklace. I like both of these spacers, but you know, I just wanted you to know it's a slightly different look. Trudy says, do you draw out your pattern on paper first when designing or pick out beads as you like and design as you go? Love this design. Oh, thank you so much, Trudy. You know, I actually design very organically and I would say spontaneously. What I do is I just kind of put the beads in a little, well, not pile, but a grouping. I will just say a grouping. Oh, and by the way, I just tied a knot on this side. So I'll put them in a grouping, and um, I just kind of start thinking where everything goes. And when I put the first set of beads on, at that point, I don't really have an exact idea, by the way, tying another knot. Yeah, at that point, I really don't have an exact idea of where all the beads are going to go. It's more like I have this kind of um, uh, vague idea of what the, the look is or what I'm going for, but I never quite know exactly what it's going to be. Or I will say in, in kind of rare occasions, I might draw things out, but I would say maybe... 90 to 99% not really. Trudy says so creative. Oh, thank you so much, Trudy. So I'm just tying another knot below the, uh, the little grouping of the three faceted barrels. And now we are going to trim our string. Very easy, just leave maybe a quarter of an inch past the knot and that's it that is how you make this lariat so what do you think was this easy I Lindsay says the beads will tell you where they want to go oh Lynn thank you for saying that you know what I always say that too I think that's perfect the beads kind of tell you, you know, as you create, you know, the next step kind of just, you know, happens very organically. So we have just made, well, maybe with a couple of shortcuts, but we did. We just made the lariat. So before I show you my little surprise project, do you guys have any questions about the lariat? Suni says, love, love, love it. Thank you, thank you, Suni. I really appreciate it. 
Okay, so you can wear this to your holiday parties. You can wear this uh, for a family get together. You can wear this for New Year's while you drink champagne. Or you can just throw it on with a pair of jeans. Um, that's sort of what I was thinking as I was designing it too. It's not just something that you wear once a year to dress up. It's something you can throw on with a pair of jeans as well and just go. So it can be dressy, it can be casual. I think a lot of our jewelry is kind of that way at this point. I mean, we don't, we don't wear those like royal gems anymore, right? So we like things that are versatile. Rosalind says, love it. Thank you so much, Rosalind. Okay, so let me do a little demo. Uh, so this is our surprise project. And uh, this is something I had been meaning to do. It's something I did last year. And it was amazingly, amazingly popular. This is what it looks like. They are just these little martini earrings. They're, they're dirty martinis, just like I like them. And I hope you like them too. Uh, so a little olive, a little pimento, and we have our dirty martinis. And they're just super, super fun for the holidays. So I want to show you how very easy it is to make them. Um, we're actually using, if you have never seen this shape in crystal, I'll tell you why. This is actually quartz crystal. It is a natural crystal, which, you know, I was able to buy these once. I was never able to find them again. And I think that it's a really kind of a special shape. So I have been using them to make these fun little earrings. And um, so I think you can see what they look like, right? So there we go. And this is how simple it is. So we have a little bead cap and this bead cap just happens to be the perfect size for the base of our flute. Kathy says, great project to use your stash of pretty beads. That's for the lariat, I think. Oh. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely, it can be. So here we go. I'm just stringing all of my components for the martini glass. And now we are going to make a 90 degree angle because we are going to make a wrap loop. What else, right? It's always about the wrap loop. And um, so go ahead and make your loop. And now we're going to wrap. So, so far, so good, right? Everything is extremely straightforward. Um, and actually, everything in this earring is very, very simple and straightforward. So there you go. I just wrap the loop and I will trim the excess wire and make sure you tuck it in so that it doesn't catch on anything. And now we're going to use an additional head pin. So we have these little head pins. I love these little head pins. And we're using an additional head pin to put our pimento and our olive on. Suni says, I have to say goodbye on my way to work. Be well. Thank you so much. You too, Suni. Have a wonderful day. Okay, guys. So now I'm going to, again, use my round nose pliers and it's almost as if you're starting to make a um, wrap loop, except we didn't make that 90 degree angle. So you can see how I make this rounded uh, turn, right? And now we're going to put it right over the loop. And so this is the part where it's a little bit awkward to demo because I have to hold on to it pretty tight. So just kind of, um, I'm, I'm trying to demo it in such a way that you can see what I'm doing. Um, 
So what I'm doing is I'm starting to wrap around the wrap from the already wrapped loop. My goodness, can we say the word wrap enough times ever? Um, and so I'm also using the chain nose pliers to make it a little bit more snug. And uh, use your chain nose to guide the wire. And whenever you feel like it needs to be a little bit more snug, just give it a nice little gentle pinch with the chain nose pliers. And whenever you feel like it's wrapped enough, snip the wire off. And again, always tuck in that little tail from the head pin. And there is our one earring, and of course you would make the other earring in the very same way. And well, actually, before we call it an earring, we are going to put an ear wire on it, right? Because, you know, we can't wear it without an ear wire. So here we go. What do you guys think? Don't you just want a dirty martini tonight now? Tony is saying no, <laughs> but I'm saying yes, because that's really one of my faves. Okay, so there we go. So I'm assuming that you did not have any questions about how to make the lariat. I think it's simple enough and straightforward enough. And given that you're going to have both the um, very detailed picture of this as well as the link back to the video, I think it'll be super fun. So in the meantime, let me give you a little update and a little preview. You may remember last Friday I demoed this bracelet. I called it Tahitian facets because these pearls are so much like Tahitian pearls, but almost even better because they're faceted. But they do have those, those nuances of beautiful color that just kind of glows from within, like some teals and, and very uh, subtle purples. I just love these pearls. So this is Tahitian Facets, and this uh, is already in the Etsy shop. So yay, I know that some of you wanted to see it in the Etsy shop. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to give you a little preview for next week. Oh, one more update. So we were sold out of the spider kit. Remember my little friends? And this was possibly one of the most popular kits ever, both in the Etsy shop as well as in the store. And we sold out so quickly. Well, the good news is that we were able to restock so it doesn't make one, it actually makes six spiders. So check it out, it's going to be in the featured on Facebook section. And uh, then the preview for next week. So I know that some of you may remember this necklace that I called Summer Fun. And it is fun. In fact, we are going to, at some point, make it again because um, it sold out quite a while back. And this is um, this is kind of a companion project to that, but not, you know, I don't make anything exactly matching. It's more like um, this is a little bit inspired by that, but it's not identical. And uh, this is called Simply Fun. Because you know what? I was thinking it does not have to be summer to be fun. We can have fun with color anytime. And if you're if you're going on a cruise, maybe this is a little bit evocative of that for you. We were going to actually go to Mexico, but then we canceled and now we're going to Florida. It's still going to be super beautiful and warm. The most important thing that is that it's going to be warm and fun. So maybe you are going somewhere fun and warm, or maybe you just want to wear this it in your house where it's warm. And um, either way, it's fun. 
Kathy says, thank you so much for the fun martini earring project. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's really simple, right? It's so, so easy to do. Lonnie says, great ideas as usual. Thank you so much. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much, Lonnie. And I hope you do as well. So, uh, and one more little uh, preview. And this one is still, you can see the strings. It's still a little bit of a work in progress. And again, it's more Ceylon. Um, and uh, this one is called Carnelian Rhapsody. And uh, this is what it looks like. So this is going to be, uh, well, of course, by the time I do it next week, it's going to be finished. And we're going to know what the ends look like. But I'm just giving you a little preview right now. So this is my Carnelian Rhapsody. And it's just fun. I think I'm just really craving color right now, and so I'm making all these fun, colorful projects. So this is a wrap bracelet that I'm doing next Friday. And um, so our Simply Fun is going to be Thursday, and Carnelian Rhapsody is Friday. I hope to see you there, so please do RSVP. Kathy says, thanks so much for cre the creative ideas. Oh, thank you so much, Kathy. My pleasure. Lindsay says, very clever using the Marguerite Swarovski crystal as a button closure. I like it. Thank you so much. You know what? It's like, it, for me, it goes in spurts where it's like I use a Marguerite in one thing and then I remember how much I like Marguerites and then I just keep using them maybe in a different way. So like in the Lariat, we had the Marguerite and now I'm using the Marguerite here. Um, and um, the other thing, too, is um, I just didn't want to forget, I'm having a sale in my Etsy shop. And I will give you the promo code. Um, it is SILVER20. So it's silver in all caps. There's no space between silver and 20. And if you use the promo code and uh, you order two or more items, you will receive 20% off. And this is actually the very first time that I am having a sale like this. Um, so I hope you go to my Etsy shop and peruse. And it ends on the 15th. Yes, thank you, Tony. So it ends this coming Wednesday at midnight. Barb says, all beautiful projects. Can't wait to make. Thanks so much for your great tutorials. Thank you so much, Barb. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. And you guys have a beautiful and creative weekend. Oh, and just one final thought to leave you with. So I feel like we still have enough time uh, for you to get the kits and possibly make them for the holidays. I think there's still enough time. And uh, um, it, they're, they're obviously, there are no guarantees. Also, I don't know how long it'll take you to make the project, but... I'm just pointing out that with every day, we have just one day less to make holiday gifts. All right. And again, thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Thank you for your beautiful comments. And have an awesome weekend.